Right, good morning everyone. This is day 11 of the Advent of Code 2019 in Erlang with nothing else than a terminal, headset, and high school math coming back to haunt me. Um, as you have probably noticed if you've watched these videos uh, in the past, uh, I am here to make mistakes and probably walk you through all of them. Uh, one of the mistakes I've made is I wanted to make a little Christmas tree with all my intros and outros. And uh, I end up having to readjust them every day because every word is different, whereas I could have just used, you know, digit uh, and had a little splash screen that is easier to do. But we got to live with the mistakes we made. So today is day 11, and I'm hoping for something a bit easier today, but my hopes are often crushed in these things. So, oh, no, not the space police. Attention, unmarked spacecraft, you are in violation of space law. Oh yeah, that's a thing now. All spacecraft must have clearly visible registration identifiers. You have 24 hours to comply or be uh, Space jail. What's space jail? Space jail is... What website is this? Oh, it's YouTube. Okay, I'm not going to be, going to be able to watch space jail on that one. Not wanting to be sent to space jail. You radio back to the elves on Earth for help. Wait. I'm alone on the spaceship without the elves. The elves just ship me to space? This sounds like a great way to get rid of an Erlang developer. Uh, okay. Okay, it takes three hours for their reply signal to reach me. They send instruction for how to power up the O oh, and even provide a small encode program. All right. I'll need to build a new emergency hull painting robot. Robot needs to be able to move around of the grid of square panels on the sides of your ship. They take the color of the screen panel and paint its screen panel black or white. All the panels are currently black. Well, okay. The encode program will serve as the brain of the robot. The program uses input instructions to access the robot's cameras. Provide zero if the robot is over a black panel or one if the robot is over a white panel. Then the program will output two values. First, it will put a value indicating the color to paint the panel. Okay. So input for black or white, output for the other one. Uh, the robot is over. Zero means paint black, one means paint white. Second, it will output a value indicating the direction the robot should turn. Zero means it should turn left 90 degrees, and one means it should turn right 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, that's all zeros and ones, so I have to make sure I don't get them. If you recall my little encode thingy, the IO message is what I'm using, so the robot will be extremely likely to send itself messages and go haywire. So I'm going to need two processes from the beginning, one for the robot and one for whatever is handling the output and input for the robot so that um, we don't cross the streams. I don't know if that was a smart decision in how I build things, but uh, we'll see probably today if I need to rework this entire encode computer thingy. Uh, we'll continue running for a while like this and halt when it is finished drawing. Do not restart the encode computer inside the robot during this process. Uh-huh. For example, okay, if it's about to start running, uh, drawing black panels as a dot, white panels as a pound sign, and the robot is pointing in the direction it is facing. Oh yeah, so it is going to be relative spinning of the robot on this. The initial state and region near the robot look like this. Okay, so that's the initial state. The panel under the robot, not visible, blah, 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 is also black because we start all black, that's true. And so any input instruction at this point should be provided zero. Okay. Uh, why? Why should it be? No, it's supposed to tell me it's color. Oh, is it because I'm supposed to paint it black? Suppose the robot eventually outputs one, paint white, and then zero, turn left. After taking these actions and moving forwards one panel the region now looks like this okay the 
paint white. All right, it painted white and then turned left. I'm starting the action moving. Okay, it looks like this one. Now this one is white. Input instructions should be provided zero. Okay, assume this, and the robo the robot might output zero paint black and then zero turn left. All right. After more outputs, one zero one zero is now back at where it started. But because it is now on a white panel, input instructions should be provided one. Oh, so I'm the robot is walking around, but I am guiding it and telling it the color. So I'm also being a camera for the robot. It appears. The area now looks like this. Before you deploy a robot, we should probably have an estimate of the area it will cover. Especially, you'll need to know the number of panels it paints at least once, regardless of color. Uh, it painted six panels. Okay. Build a new emergency help. Helping. God. Okay. I have no idea there. So I do have the encode program. Uh, man, I frankly have no, okay, so I've got a robot, uh, let's get started at least, uh, last encode day was on day nine, I believe, and I've <laughs> moved everything here, we've solved big bugs in that one, uh, running our program here. It is going to be a bit different because we are going to uh, provide a robot with a different thing. The input is in the map right away. So I'm going to make a little where I'm going to put the map, but also the IO handler and this is going to essentially just I'm going to link it because if it crashes I want the entire thing to fail loudly um, so this is going to return me a process ID because I know it's going to be a different process uh, I know the IO handler here so I'm going to map uh, I'm going to pass that later, but it's, I think it's called just output is the value and I'm going to give it the IO handler here and let me see if that's the thing. Yeah, it's the output directly in the map. I'm going to give it the default of just this, which is going to spawn program of map and self. And for the spawn link value here, I'm just going to uh, okay. The result is going to be here. I'm going to just return the result to the parent. No. All right. I'm going to also mark them so eventually I know um, which programs return which output. And so here I have this. I am going to just return the PID. And then I'm going to write a little function here that's going to collect result of a given PID. And the only thing it's going to do is with an optional timeout but I'll put the timeout later because they're a link. Uh, result, PID, and result. And this is only going to return result, and that's it. Okay, 
So now this will let me do something like, and I'm going to work from the example. Because frankly, um, otherwise going to be hard. So the thing I will still have to do is string to source of whatever the string is. I don't know for now. Uh, and so this is going to be, oh, what did I do for this one? String to source, source to map is still required. I'm tired of uh, also having this to do. So where's my source to map is way lower. Okay. So I'm just going to call it to source. It's going to be string. Uh, to program, or yeah. I'm just going to call it parse program and be done. And that's going to call my string to source of string. And then the other step was source to map. And just return that. So I can only do here. The program is going to be parse program from the string and then just spawn the program all the map. This is going to give me the pit of the program and then the only thing I need to do is collect the result of the pit. So that's going to be my base structure of it. And now I'm free to do whatever I want in here, such as understanding what the hell the map and the program is in the in here. Okay. So now I clearly need to go back to reading the thing because I've got the encode computer, but I've got no idea uh, what the map is and what the uh, panel is and what any of that crap is. Uh, because I've got the encode computer, I don't know what the dimensions are. And all I've got is this stupid panel input that, okay. So I don't I don't understand the specifications. So the encode program will serve as the brain of the robot. The program uses the input instructions to access the robot's camera. Provide zero if the robot is over a black panel or if it is a white panel. That I can understand, but where is the freaking map? I guess. Where, where is the map? This is a thing. What's the hull of my, 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 my spacecraft? It needs to be on a grid, detect the color of its current pattern. Oh! It will output a value. Okay, maybe I don't know the dimensions. It's just running over the grid. And then I will need to catch the value to know if it's black or white, and then if the robot is over zero, means to paint the panel. Okay, so it gives me the color, but it gives me the color it will need to paint that I pass it as an input again. Second, it will output a value indicating the direction it should turn. Okay. After the robot turns, it shall always move forwards one panel. The robot will continue running for a while. So I just assume the entire map is black. It gives me a code and I just... The robot, okay. The panel under the robot, not visible, is also black. Okay, let's go for that one. So I've got a direction I'm going to be facing north. So I'm going to have to write a little, you know, robot code in here. And this is going to be what I, I think should be a little state machines. And I'm a big, big fan of state machines because in our language recursive uh, functions, it's kind of easy to make it all work. So here I will probably need to, you know, start state machine. Um, 
I won't necessarily need to collect the result, we'll see what I do, but my FSM, finite state machine, will need to have a direction, uh, which is going to be, you know, direction should be something like, I'm going to just up, down, left, all right, then I am going to have a uh, uh, tile, uh, this is going to be a tiles map, which is going to be probably a coordinate, once again, of left, right, down, right, that tells me if it has been painted or not, I'm going to have painted, uh, on painted and the color in there, and, uh, the thing will be used to know which is going to be either black or white. And this will let me know the color of everything I have in each of the map. And then when I'm done, I will only have to essentially count how many cord. Oh, actually, I don't even need to care if they are painted or not. Uh, because I will only visit the tiles on which I am. Uh, and I'll, I will only paint those on which I am. So I will only need to store if they are black or white and count how many keys are in the maps to know how many exist. Um, and I will also, uh, the current coordinates, so X and Y will be the current ones. And so these two will be the things I will update with all the messages. This is here, the state tracking I will need to do to uh, know the current state of the universe the robot should be in and probably give my answer at the end. Okay, so let's see if that makes sense uh, still from this point of view. So I will be starting facing up. So let's prepare something like edit FSM. Uh, and it will be FSM facing up on what I assume is 0, 0 on an empty map. Okay. Um, The initial state region looks like this. The panel under the robot, not visible here because uh, pop up is shown instead, is also black. So I will have something probably looking like, you know, get color. I have a given map uh, and a coordinate. And this will just be maps get chord in the map and default to black. This is going to be an accessor function for that. So any input instructions at this point should be provided zero. So I start I should start by giving it uh, for the robot. So I'm going to need the robot PID actually because I need to communicate with it. Uh, just going to track the PID. Uh, this is technically the robot, so it should be the encode PID. So for the encode PID, I should send it the IO instruction of zero, I think is what they told me. This is how I initialize it. Uh, input should be provided zero. Okay. Suppose the robot eventually outputs one, which I will get in this Actually, I will probably need to also, um, the bot is also going to need to be spawned here. I will need a new program for the robot and they're going to communicate with each other. Um, I will need to spawn the program and give it here. The, the IO is going to go to the bot state machine when I spawn the program. But the parent is still going, okay, so yeah, the result is still going to be sent to this one. So, uh, uh, God damn it. We'll figure it out because I will need to have the encode PID in this one and the robot will need to have the encode PID of the other ones. So. The order in which they start. 
it is going to be a bit annoying. Whoops. The IO there is usually fine. So I'm going to pass it the PID for this one, but at a later point. So I will need to be able to, you know, um, uh, encode PID is going to be this one. This one has nothing. And in the init FSM, I'm also going to wait to receive here uh, what is the encode PID this way. So when I receive it, I will be able to start storing it, sending it instructions, and the FSM is going to send the bot itself. We'll know about this. The spawn program wants to spawn it. This is a little initialization dance that is annoying to do, but should work because both need to be aware of each other. Um, okay. So where was I? First instruction sent. Suppose the robot eventually outputs one. And so here in my FSM, I'm going to therefore and I'm going to, I, I'm still in the kind of pseudocode because I'm trying to understand and I'm doing it step by step. Uh, I'm cleaning up. I will receive an IO with a value that is one. And then zero turn left. After taking these actions and moving forwards one panel. Okay, so I order it to paint, then it tells me that I should paint the current part. Why? Right, so I should insert in my um, map here X and Y is now. So here this is going to be. Uh, color digit. I'm going to get a color out of color digit. And so I will paint it of the given color. This is going to be my new map. And now I will be waiting for another message. And this is going to be a turn digit. Uh, and the new direction is going to be the uh, direction of the existing one and a turn digit. And this is going to let me loop at that point. Oh, and then I need to uh, new chord is going to need to move forwards. So forwards on this new direction that I'm heading at. Uh, and so then I will be into new direction, new chords. Uh, direction is here, the new direction is there. The chord is going to be forwards the new direction, but I also need to pass it the X and Y value. This is going to be the new chords. I have the new map and the encode PID should be unchanged. And then this is the end of this receive loop. And this is the end of this receive loop. Now the thing I'm not doing with this function is ever terminating. And to return that, I'm going to require it to receive a halt signal. In which case, I will um, only return the, um, the map itself. And the halt signal, this is where I need to do it, is uh, when I have collected the results from the PID, then I will need to send halt to the bot. And I will also collect the result of the bot. And here, this is a little cheat because I'm going to reuse the function for something else, but that's fine. And here, essentially, for the init FSM, uh, This is going to be apparent. Uh, 
I'm going to cheat it here um, and do parent result self of the init FSM. And so I should have the big result present for that one. So let's write the little other functions we are missing. Um, so the first one we probably have here is uh, the color. When I get zero, what it's telling me is uh, provides zero if the robot is over a black panel. I should be providing it though a new digit zero is black color one is white and here's what I'm gonna do if you send me black I'm going to uh, no I'm going to do this that way uh, it should move forwards Okay, so I'm going to do a little thing here where when I enter a given state, this is where I detect the current color I have and send it to the robot because that's going to be the new instructions here. And I assume it would be black by default, but this is only because the thing I should be getting is, uh, I think I had get color from the map at the current coordinates X and Y. And that should be um, just current color. And I need to send to the robot, so int code pid here. Uh, that current color. Uh, that's going to be, I'm going to call it digital color. Uh, actually, it's going to be two paint color to paint of the current color and uh, so this is going to give me the color that I store I'm going to get the color that I store but uh, color to paint is going to tell me that if I am on a black color I should I believe return one in here if it is over a black panel uh, provides zero oh, that's the camera okay Provide zero if it is over a black panel and color to paint. If it is over a black panel, uh, provide a one. And this is a bit stupid to do this in a small program like that, but I very much like in general to keep my, you know, the actual representation and the symbolic representation, the high level one, as distinct things. And so, and so this is my tendency to do it in all the cases where I can do it. So I get the color, it should default to black. The color to paint, if I'm black, I should send the status zero. And if I decided that I uh, wanted to return one, then I can change that into small functions, but leave the entire logic of the state machine more or less like it is. So it's going to return me a color digit. I store this, put this in the map. I turn around, move forwards in the new direction, send the FSM, and off I go. If I save that, there's probably a lot of stuff that's going to be missing, but let me finish reading the thing. So it will output the color to paint the panel. I'm going to receive the first message. Zero means to paint it black, okay. And then I paint it in my map. Second, it will output a value indicating the direction I turn. Oh yeah, I need to make the robot turn. So zero means it should turn left and one means it should turn right. So uh, the direction is going to be interesting here. The direction would be, um, yeah, the direction I don't actually need to know the coordinate, but if I'm, uh, okay. I'm going to translate the turn digit as well. So if I turn uh, from zero, I should be, turning left 
And if I get turn one, I should be turning right. So if I'm up and asking to turn left, then I'm going to go left. If I if I'm going left and asking to turn left, then I will be going down, down. Asking to turn left, I'm going to go right. And if I'm going right and asking to turn left, I'm going to go up. And then I'm going to do the same thing with uh, direction up. And I'm asking to go right, I'm going to go right. And it, those are really easy to enumerate going that way. That's going to go down direction in and I'm asking to go right this is going to go left and direction left asking to turn right is going to go up all right and then I'm going to only need to go the forwards direction so forwards X and Y uh, I'm going to make it a bit more compact in my case of direction of because I would only actually if I'm going left on this uh, I'm going to do x minus 1 y Boom. I'm going to go up on this going to always use the same order up plus plus 1 left down is going to be minus one let me align these and right ah. if i'm going right it's going to be x plus one so up left down right are all covered my directions and steps are done unused 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 yep so this one here now i need to call this one uh Direction coordinates are fine. The map here don't need to give it something more. The direction it is defined. Oh, whoops! Unused, unused, unused. So where are these going to be used? FSM four is unused. FSM four is ended. FSM. Oh, that I leave it the parent value in here. Nope, it is called here. But example is not called. I, I actually don't have an example for this one, right? A new chord. Oh. Spawn program map is unused. Indeed, I'm going to just kill it and put it default when I need it. So I actually, yeah, don't have a map. I only have my encode computer. <laughs> they, they did not give me a sample. They just assumed that because my encode computer is right from the previous days, I don't need an example. So I'm going to kill my example function. And this is going to be day one directly. Oops. Okay, and so parse program here is just going to be my advent of uh, input of day 11. And we'll see how that runs. So advent uh, run 11. Bad map, zero, zero, okay. Uh, I'm going to link the process here so that they all die together and now I need to interrupt the thing and if I recompile it and run it again at least it explodes and I get the proper stack trace. Okay, um, I'm going to quit that one. Bad map 00, zero at get. Oh, did I invert my thing in get caller? Oh, get caller. Yep, it's coordinate map here. It's compile, run it, function close, forwards, 
left of zero zero. Did I just swap these? Where's my forwards? Oh, no direction. Forwards is here. Yeah, coordinate is first. Small problems, easy to solve. Type checker would have found it as well, but. Okay, so I do get my output in here, but that's not what they're asking me. They're asking me how many tiles have been painted regardless of how many times they've been painted. So my result here should be uh, all the tiles. So what I want is the length of, uh, actually it's just maps size of my result I had here. This is all I need. And so let me recompile this and I get 2720. And hopefully that's right, because otherwise I don't know what I'm going to do. 2720, please work. It worked! Woo! Okay. Oh, this is good news. No, I don't want to quit. Okay. Part two. I'm not sure what it's trying to paint, but it's definitely not a registration identifier. Check your external ship cameras again. You'll notice a white panel ma marked emergency hull painting robots charting panel. The rest of the panel are still black, but it looks like the robot was since just chart on a white panel, not a black one. Okay. Based on Spaceland brochure, the police attached to a valid registration and finds it only eight capital. After starting the robot on a single white panel instead, what does it register on you? Oh, wait. Am I going to need to paint this thing? Okay, so we're going to start the robot uh, on a white default tile. And the thing I'm going to do for this is um, I'm going to take my initial result here and pass them an initial map. So my first initial map here for this one needs to be black. And this is now too long of a thing, so I'm going to just break that one down here. So the first program should keep working exactly the same. Why is it complaining? Before the end of the parent. Oh yeah, need to close my map. I'm going to fix this in a jiffy. All right. And program two, now I'm going to just start it on a white panel. And because I'm on the first panel, I know it gets painted, so I'm not breaking anything of my previous logic. Um, here I'm going to get a map, but I'm guessing I'm going to have to print the freaking map. And I'm going to handle this a bit later because right now, god damn it. Um, init map, it's just going to be this. Init map, it's just going to be this. All right, um, and so here I'm going to do a printing that's just going to take the map. And for now, I'm just uh, maps to list of a map. And I'm just going to output the freaking thing and see what I get. Because I need to get 2720 is still the thing I get there. All right. And now I've got all these coordinates that I know I'm going to have to print. Um, so I'm going to find what is likely uh, the point I have that is further left, the point I have that is further right, and then Print the motherfuck. All right, and uh, black is default still. So um, to print the map, I'm going to go with all the keys of the map and uh, all chords. Uh, I'm going to find my smallest x. So. Um, Small x is going to be lists minimal value of all the x's I have in 
in the court. <laughs> All the coordinates I have on the map, this is going to be the smallest one. Um, the big Y is going to be of the Y I have in all the values in the coordinates. And now I will be able to print starting from, I need the small Y as well. Uh, I need the big X and the small Y. So the small Y is going to be Y on this, the big X is going to be the max X on this, and I'm going to have to print from small X and small Y until big X and big Y for the entire map. Okay, and I'm going to use a get coordinate value I have in my robot because it already handles my defaults fine and everything. So if I'm at the point where uh, I finish when all the values of, I did this earlier in, uh, what was it? Was it in day nine that I painted stuff or I think it was day eight. Yeah, this is the logic I don't want to have to <laughs> rewrite, essentially. <laughs> and it's so close to what I need. I'm going to reuse some of that. Uh, when I'm at the same height, I'm done, uh, because those I had the coordinates for this. And Okay, I'm going to consider that I'm done. When I do this, instead of... Okay, I'm going to still paint my thing, I need to print the dimension, the binary, this is going to be fine, but I'm no longer having a binary here. That's the interesting thing. So what I'm going to paint instead is going to be um, case get color. I think that was the thing and the coordinate in the map. Uh, a map, it's no longer a binary, it's going to be a map here. Here it's a map of, uh, if it's white, I'm going to IO format this empty space. If it's black, I'm going to IO format this empty space. And this is going to be my logic. And then I'm just going to move from one to the other. Oh, it's not going to be zero, though. Oh. I will need to still carry around my small x value to know how far I rewind on each of them. Uh, small x. So I think you're going to call it the minimal width. Uh, And here it's going to be the minimal width on the map because otherwise I'm going to restart halfway through because I'm using relative coordinates based on where my robot is right now and I don't have a true zero for these things. But that should be all right. Because I have my base width, uh, which here it's not necessarily a base width. This is going to be only, yeah, here I don't need them at all. I just need my dimensions. For this one, when I'm reaching my max width, uh, yep, yeah, then I need to get back to this. This might just work. Bin isn't bound. Yeah, it's a map now. And when I build on it, we'll just print OK. So let's see what we get. You know what, I have issues with how they're doing blacks and whites, and so uh, I'm going to still swap them for readability. Uh, that's a candy cane. <laughs> candy canes. Uh,
K H E. Okay, what are these? Eh, you know what? What happens if I just open a very much smaller? No time to update this stuff. I just want to put it smaller, and maybe when it's smaller, it's easier to read for me. It isn't a lot easier to read. What if I take this one instead? Am I printing them backwards, like in a mirror? I'm going to close this output and debug what I'm getting to make sure that I'm actually getting the right kind of coordinates. So for each of these, I'm also just going to uh, here what I'm going to do. I'm going to accumulate all the coordinates I'm printing in a map. And uh, I'm going to call V11 part 2. And uh, chords are going to be this. Uh, I don't want him written down. So I'm starting from 0 minus 5. And I'm incrementing for all of them until, okay, 0 minus 5 until 41, 5, 0 minus 4, 0, until 41, is this always 41 for this one as well? Yep. Okay, am I missing a max coordinate here? So let's put a line break in here and see what is small x, small y, and big x, big y, all about. And see if I'm printing the right coordinates and how I copy pasted stuff. Uh, and part two. So here, until 42, 0. So, but those are supposed to be eight capital letters. Yeah, they might be upside down, which would be odd. You know, there's a very, very quick way to figure that out, which is called just adjust it by hand and see what you get. So a line here is going to be my uh, yeah, new bottom line. This one will go just right above. This one will go there. J, that one doesn't make sense either. Yeah. Okay, wait, so this one, I don't know which capital letter that is supposed to be, but this, neither is this one, this one is. H E, yeah. J L K, no. Uh, J L Y J K H G J. I'm going to try to try that one, and see if it's just because I 
did it upside down for some reason. So J L Y, and then I had uh, J K H H. GJ. Uh, is that all right? Yep. Nope, that was not the right one. Okay. So maybe it was in the right order here, but what are these freaking letters? Because I know the robot is right, then it's only the printing function that's kind of freaking out. Uh, okay, let's reread it again. But it looks like the robot was fixing to start one book. A valid registration identifier is always eight capital letters. After turning the robot on a single white panel instead, what registration does it paint on your hall? Okay. And I did paint them from... Uh... Oh, wait. Yeah. Going up uh, is... A positive value that's the thing right when I had my little coordinates in here going up is positive value so I was painting from uh, yeah okay so I am going from the smallest one to the biggest one, hmm. but I need to start because all of these values are flipped upside down. I will start on the big Y and in the small Y. But I'm going to go down on the height. Let's see what that gives me. Now the coordinates are going to be entirely different. Aha! That ain't... That ain't exactly right either, though. But I'm starting from okay, 0, 1 until, let's see what I get in terms of coordinates here. At least I'm drawing what might be in the right order. So starting from 0, 1, 2, and I'm drawing going down to 40, minus 4. And my smallest value was 0, 5, I believe. So I might be missing a row in how I did this one. Uh, I'm going to call it min h when uh, I'm just going to stop it going that way and go one step further. Oh, yeah, it's. because I'm not going up anymore. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I was missing a row. J, Z, P. All right. Missing a row does not help. J, Z, P. J, R, A. G, J. Submit. And it worked! <laughs> All right. And that one was done in under an hour, so it was still a bit longer than the best one we've had.
but it went fine. So this is it. I don't care if you subscribe. I don't care if you have vote. Uh, I started receiving a few comments um, either here on Twitter or in Slack or even on uh, the videos themselves, and they're pretty nice. So um, I'm hoping that, yes, uh, the stuff that you see me do, even if it's full of mistakes, is actually an interesting uh, learning or just, just interesting experience to go through. Uh, because it's one of the things, right, when I'm writing texts or making a presentation or writing a book, the thing you always see is, you know, the perfectly good step at every moment of the way with the good result that I've had the time to work through and make look good in everything I do. And it's the same when you submit a pull request or something. Uh, but unless you're pairing with someone, there are very few times where you can see all the kind of dead ends that someone runs into. And uh, the little things that uh, we do to help ourselves debug and figure things out. And when the videos are long, you're probably not seeing the little things I do on paper and doodles to figure out what I have or just pouring over the output until I find what I need to find. Uh, but some of them are just, you know, internal mental work that you're never going uh, to have insights into. Just looking at data until something pops up. Uh, but in this case, like this one, uh, yeah, you can see the little tools I use or the little debugging approaches, and hopefully they can be useful. Um, and in the worst case, they're totally useless, but at least they're somewhat entertaining. So this is it. Uh, see you for day 12, and have a good day.